What did you want to tell in this book? Well, uh, thank you, first of all. Thank you for having me here. Of course. Uh, what I want to tell, the story that I want to, or the message I want to bring to this, in this book was that uh, if I was able to do it, you know, I mean, all these readers uh, that are reading the book, especially the teenagers, the youth, I want them to understand that they can also make it. Mm -hmm. I had to overcome a lot of uh, tough situations, a lot of uh, uh, walls I had to knock down, but I made it. Thank God. And uh, that's the message that I wanted to bring uh, while I was doing this book, that uh, it's not impossible, you know, that uh, with God you can accomplish anything. And I was able to accomplish what I wanted to, and that's playing baseball for the New York Yankees. Were the obstacles professional, personal, mental, physical? What was the biggest all, barrier? All of them, all of them. Uh, physical, I, uh, I had surgery in 1992 just when I signed, I signed in 1990, so in 1992 I have uh, elbow surgery. Uh, uh, the other one was uh, the language. I didn't speak, uh, I didn't spoke English back then and for me it was a, a huge uh, wall that I had to uh, climb and it wasn't easy. Thank God for my teammates <laughs> that they were there for me and teach me the uh, the language and uh, you know all there was uh, just uh, overcome uh, times where uh, you wasn't at the best. You know, I mean that's competition. And uh, but I was able, you know, I was able to do it, and uh, that was amazing. And that's that's again that's the message that I wanted to bring to the kids. It is not easy. It's not easy. It's not such a free ride. You know, I mean, sometimes uh, we want free rides and it doesn't happen, especially in sport. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, uh, uh, you, have to, you have to fight hard. You mentioned your teammates. You are part of what we now know as the core four. And Derek Jeter retiring at the end of the season signifies the end of an era, really. What is the legacy that the core four, you, Andy Pettit, Jorge Posada, and Derek Jeter, what do you guys leave behind? Well, I mean, uh, uh, what we leave behind is that uh, we all, all four players have one in common, and that was uh, winning, you know, being the best that we can be for the organization, for the city of New York, and for our fans. You know, so that was the legacy that we're leaving back behind that, uh, you know, no matter where we were, no matter who we're playing against, uh, we wanted to do our best. You know, it's not social individual here in this, in this family. It was uh, just a team effort that we need to do whatever it takes to win the games, you know, and that reflect into the, the rest of the team that uh, we needed to do whatever. And uh, that's why we won the championships that we won. Five World Series titles for you. Do you still watch a lot of Yankee games now? I do. I do watch the games, yes, definitely. Because if, we, uh, if I don't, I cannot uh, I can call the guys and tell them what I see, you know? So, I mean, that's exactly what I do. So, people are saying that the way that they used to use you and John Wetland when you were coming up, kind of starting as the late reliever and then giving off to him, you eventually became the closer. That's the way the Yankees are sort of using Batances and Robertson now. Do you see the similarities? Well, I see a lot of similarities. The only difference was that, uh, you know, I mean, uh, we were a lot older than them. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's not easy, though. Those guys have been doing a tremendous job. You know, Robertson, for being the first year as a closer, uh, he's doing a, he won't a standing. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, you're going to fail. It's not something that if you fail, no, you're going to fail. And when you fail, you know, you have to bounce back uh, hard, and he has done it. You know, Betances has done a tremendous job. You know I mean? Uh, uh, unfortunately, game like last, like last night. You know, I mean, those games are going to happen, and you have to understand that. Uh, if you, that's the only thing that I, I'm, I'm a little concerned, that if, if they don't understand it. But if they do, I mean, uh, and I'm sure they do, they will be, they will be fine. You know, I mean, there's no, it's no, it's no reason why not. I want to get your thoughts on Yasiel Puig, the phenom for the Dodgers. Could he have played for the Yankees? Well, I mean, uh, uh, he's young. 
you know. And uh, it's one thing that the Yankees do, they recognize the, uh, the uh, talent, you know, the abilities that you have. I mean, Jaciel has done a tremendous job. He has a ton of, of uh, abilities, you know. But yes, well, you made some mistakes uh, uh, mentally, more than physically, more mentally. And, uh, well, the Yankees will, will treat him as the Dodgers treat him. You know, sometimes you have to be benched because, I mean, uh, you don't, you kind of uh, uh, didn't do what the rules uh, saying that you're supposed to do. But at the same time, they're doing a tremendous job with him, though. I mean, he's a, a great guy and a, a, a guy that wants to win, you know. But sometimes, as a youngster, you know, you do things that, uh, you know, uh, you don't supposed to, but you learn, you know, and I see him uh, mature. In, in, in the game of baseball, and I think uh, he's going to be there for a long time if he just takes care of himself. You had so many epic battles with Manny Ramirez. He's now back in the minor leagues as a player coach. You're laughing already. Do you think Manny would be a good coach? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. That's a question that I ask, that I ask myself. Do Manny will be a good coach? I don't, I don't see that. You know, the Manny that I know, I don't see that. You know, the money is, is money. They love to play the game, but uh, have fun. You know, and sometimes coaching is, is, is not much of that. You know, it's, you have to be strict. You have to know what you're doing and, uh, and uh, be there as a model and leader for, you, for your team. So, I mean, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong and he can be a great coach. I don't know, but the money that I know, you know, it will be a little hard for me to see that. Final question for you. Who are the top three hitters you faced in your career? The top three hitters that I faced in my career. Edgar Martinez will be one of them. Uh, he just had your number? Oh, he had my, my whole, me, everything. I mean, uh, who will be another one? Uh, that will be uh, Griffey. Ken, Ken Griffey, Griffey. Jr. Was, was a great hitter. Uh, uh, Barry Bonds. What about Barry made him different? I mean, Barry was, I mean, uh, he was so uh, mentally in the game. He was, uh, how do you say that, disciplined mm. in the plate. He doesn't chase bad pitches, and that's what make a, a, a hitter uh, uh, difficult, uh, tough to get him. Because I mean, as a pitcher, you're trying to trick some guys, you know, and the hitters, and try to make him swing bad pitches. Well, if the hitter doesn't bash or doesn't go for those bad pitches, you have to make uh, good pitches, meaning you know, use the corners, and uh, he was one of them. He was able to, to do that, and when you make a mistake, you, you make a pay. Do you explain in the closer how to throw a cup fastball? No, no, I didn't explain it, no. That's something that I had to teach personally. That's a one-to-one -one teaching. <laughs> Any other baseball things that are in the book that you think fans should know about? Well, I mean, uh, uh, not really. I mean, uh, it's everything that I that I that I brought into the book is, is, is legit. It's, it's just good to, uh, for the youth to know and understand the, the, uh, the hard times that you're going to get, the uh, difficult times that you're going to go through. But at the same time, if you're cons being consistent and, and trust yourself, be able to overcome all those, all those uh, challenges. So, I mean, uh, that's something that I really uh, put in there. So. Uh, so the, the, the youngsters can use it. Were you surprised the Pedroia line got so much Yeah, yeah, so because much I mean, press? yeah, it was, it was, because I mean, it wasn't, it, it wasn't supposed to be like that though, because I mean, uh, uh, what I was bringing was that uh, it's two different players, you know, Cano has a tremendous talent, natural talent, you know, and uh, um, Pedroia is a uh, five, five, you know, but uh, he, he used every inch of his body to, to become who he is. You know, so here we have a, 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 a youngster with so much abilities. And you have the other one, they have basically uh, have to earn everything that he has. Mm -hmm. 
you know, so there's different, different players, good players, both great players, but different players. I was trying to bring two, the two differentialities between one player and the other one, you know, because sometimes you're good, you, you're still young, like yourself, but you forgot how great you are, you know, and the other one is uh, uh, so good that he had to remain always positive mentally on that, in that base, because if he doesn't, he won't be there. Yeah, wonderful to win a World Series with Seattle. I hope so. I hope so. You know, I mean, I love him. I love Cano, and I, I respect uh, uh, a lot, you know. So, I mean, uh, we see what happens. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this clip from our daily live show, SI Now. You can find a link to the complete episode in the description box below. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe to Sports Illustrated's YouTube channel. It's not just SI Now, it's girls in bikinis because we got your back. Remember, you can watch SI Now Monday through Friday live at 1 p.m. Eastern only on SI.com. We hope to see you there with the girls in bikini.